to another episode of American Reef. I'm Russ Kickle, and today we're going to demonstrate what I think is one of the best fish foods for the reef keeping hobbyist. Before we do that, let's have a word from our sponsors. So what is that food? Well, it's American Reef's High Performance Diet, or HPD for short. Now by its very nature, this video is instructional, right? Meaning that I've got Reef Tutor subscribers that basically purchase the High Performance Diet, the HPD. And what I want to do is create a video for them that gives them a little history of the product that explains, number one, how to use it, but more importantly, number two, why I believe it to be the best fish food for the reef keeping hobbyist. Now, you know, to support that claim, right, we know that you've heard me say many, many times, right, only time will prove a product to be good, right? And as such, that's one of the reasons why I even make that claim, meaning I've been using HPD for the better part of a decade, right? And the interesting part about it is, as I was thinking about putting this video together, I realized that, you know, a, a large chunk of that, we actually have the tank that I used it on, right, from like 2007, 2008-ish kind of thing to now. So we've got the fish who have been alive most of, most of that decade as well, right? And you'll see like most of the tangs, for example, like the, the large hippos or even the naso tang or even the yellow tangs, right? You know, they've been around basically eating that food for that period of time. And I've got a video documenting, right, so you can kind of see what they've looked like through the years, right? And just the fact that they've lived that long, we know it says something about the food. Now, we know that there are many different aspects for keeping fish healthy, right? Um, but food, healthy fish, right, that's one at least key aspect of it, we know for sure. Now, it was funny, again, while I was putting this video together, you know, it, it occurred to me that, you know, a lot of you uh, pick fish food, right, based on claims of what other people say, right? And, and it's funny because when I originally was choosing my food, I was trying to do the same thing. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to base it off of somebody who knew better, not a fish store owner per se, right, but basically a nutritionist. And, you know, at the time, um, I was doing a lot of business with Gary, right, and again, those of you who have seen the previous episodes know Gary was around for probably two or three years uh, in the beginning of the American Reef videos. And, and basically, neither one of us were kind of nutritionists. But... Gary knew a guy, actually, who was a nutritionist that basically was a curator for uh, a local aquarium. And, and as such, um, he got a hold of this formula that they used, and from there, that was the birth of kind of HPD. Now, again, rather than me talk it, what I want to do is kind of show you that clip of what we taped probably back in 2009, something like that, of uh, a little history of high-performance diet. High-performance diet. Yeah, I mean, you know... As usual, Russ, you always interrupt my days, so I didn't have, you know, the total time to set this up, but it's, it's something that's needed to be done. So let's look at the dust. So there you go. So okay. This is a high-tech setup. So. Right. So we want to kind of go over this diet to the viewers, explain why you use it, what it consists of, and basically um, what results you can get from using a diet like this. Now. So, like I said, so when I you say that, let's just qualify. Food, you feed this to your fish. Right? Absolutely, right, 100%. Right. Right. It's economical. The value as far as nutrition is unmatched in one food. Right. Um, the best example I can use is like Bulk Reef Supply. They designed a reef chili. This, this is really a fantastic comparison to the diet that we're, we're pitching today. Right. Okay? Now, Let's let's talk a little bit about the reef chili for a second. Okay. And I'm not trying to do a showcase for reef chili, but it, right. but they did the same thing. Conception, right, right? You know, when you have an arsenal of foods, it's very time consuming. It's expensive to m master feeding all those different foods. Right, right. With the reef tank, it is possible to put different foods together mm -hmm. and feed them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what this high performance diet does. Mm -hmm. It mixes a combination of lots of vitamins and minerals and nutrition together in one food. Right. So when a fish digests that piece of food, they're getting all their daily nutritional requirements in one bite. Right. And that's yeah. really important. If you feed mice's shrimp, brine shrimp, plankton, right. nori, 
You right. gotta, that, that's a lot of work to feed all those different foods, and a fish can't eat all those at one time. Right. So you got to wait a couple hours, and I'll feed some nori, and I'll feed some mysis, and I'll feed some brine. Just like we talked about you know, a couple weeks ago, it's not necessarily natural, right? Meaning, in, in Mother Nature, you have one consistent diet, usually, right? Not yeah, I mean, you know, your, your herbivores are going to go to the same rocks, the same area, and feed, and go right. back and hide at night, and bite, you know, that right. same process every day. So right. you can translate that into your reef skills, into your feeding habits by feeding the same place, the same time, the same type of food, and your fish will adjust to that. The only thing that they can't adjust to is what's in that food. What's right. in each individual food you're feeding is up to what you're providing. So they're relying on you to provide the necessary vitamins, minerals, and nutrients to hold color, for bone structure, for bone growth, for teeth, right. their growth, and all those things. Right to you know, enable that animal to keep right. growing and be successful in your aquarium. Right. So, uh, so that being said, uh, again, now I know I've used this food for a while, right? Love it because... Yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing, too. We didn't just jump into this. I've been feeding this food for right. years and years and years. Right. Now, the diet has changed a little bit, but the diet has always been customized to make it better right. and add more to it. And as, as our nutritionists learn more about reef fish, they add more target vitamins that those reef fish need. Right. But once I turn somebody on to it and they stick to it, you know, it's like, you know, when you have a child and you want that child to sleep in his own bed, okay? <laughs> it might not work the first night, might not work the second night, but it's that commitment, just keep hitting him with it. Right. Eventually he's gonna stay in his own bed if you're committed. Right. These foods, the fish may not react to it and love it and it's the greatest thing. And I've had customers respond that way, oh, they don't like it. Right. Well, no, you have to stick to it. If they get hungry enough, they're going to eat it. It's better for them. Right. It's better for that child to sleep in his own bed. Right. Okay, but I guess that's up for debate. <laughs> right. That's the precious thing in my mind. Can you tell, bottom, can you tell Gary's going to be yeah, more? Right. right. So, yeah. the moral of the story is that this food fits all the daily requirements of a reef fish. Right. That's why zoos use it. They use it because they don't have time to feed 20 things every day. Right. If you, like we go behind the scenes at zoos, right. insane the amount of work they have. So they need their reef fish to get what they need to get, bam. All right. their vitamins and minerals are set for the day. They right. throw romaine lettuce in there or nori for them to graze and act natural. That's not covering very much on their new daily nutritional requirements. Right. This food is. Okay, so uh, I guess let's do a couple of things. Why don't we, uh, A, you know, we go through the general food itself, right? Maybe a little history where where it came from, and then um, B. Well, you mix some up for the shop here. Like okay. You're do anyway. All right. It's very there. simple. Let's go the, through the mixing process. Show you the food and show you how we prepare it. All right. Let's throw a little bit on the table. Okay. Okay. So it's like a Jello mix. You know. Sure. It's a powder, and when it's activated with hot water and mm -hmm. then put in the refrigerator it becomes like putty sure and we'll show you some that we mixed up earlier okay. now the hot water you mean like microwave water yeah i mean it doesn't ha it doesn't have you know you have to use the same process like you're making jello okay it doesn't have to be like burn your fingers off hot okay but to activate properly it needs to be pretty hot like you're making a cut like you're heating up a cup of coffee okay okay so what i have is i have two and a half ounces of uh, high performance diet, and I have two and a half ounces of hot water, microwaved water. So that's what you're going to use to make it. Yes. Now remember, when you mix this, it's personal preference and personal thickness of this food. Right. You, you don't have to make it as thin as I do or as thick as I do. You just mix it to your liking and your reef inhabitants' liking. Right. Okay. Right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the HPD inside there, okay. and then I'm going to mix the hot water in, okay? Now this is a lot of food. The average hobbyist is not going to mix this much food, all, all right? So, so let's talk about that just for a moment. Go ahead. Um, first of all, the food itself, right? Um, well, what's a little history on it? before we get into like the, the whole storage and all that fun stuff. Well, I mean, the first thing I learned about this food is, you know, I wondered years ago, like, 
do zoos feed like as much mice as shrimp as I feed and brine shrimp and right. all these frozen foods? Right. I mean, it cost a fortune. They stink. You know, it's just, it was unbelievable to me. So a friend of mine who's a curator of a very uh, prestigious facility, he told me, no, 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 no. We feed a little bit of that. Like sometimes mm -hmm. when we get animals in, we, want, we just want to get them to eating. But once the fish are in captivity, we get them on this high performance diet. We get them on something that, you know, remember with zoos, every animal in a zoo has daily nutritional requirements to ensure the health of that animal. Right. From a seahorse to an elephant, okay? So if that animal is not getting its daily nutritional requirements, you know, I don't want to say that the zoo's in violation, but they're they're not they're not doing what they should for that animal, and that zoos are very conscious of that aspect. Right. So reef fish are no different. So these diets have been created for specific animals in zoos. Right. This is a diet that's specifically for captive reef fish. So now this particular blend, though, right? Right. A little bit different. Right. There's lots of look. There's lots of blends out there, okay? Let me grab a rag. Yeah, just kind of focusing on that. So again, you mixed it 50-50. That was almost exactly 50-50. Sometimes I'll add less water or, mm -hmm. you know, more gel. Now, if you make it too thick and you right. can't get it to smooth out, you add more water. Sure. Vice versa, you add more food. Sure. That's all, to get the thickness so it lays nice and smooth like a batter. And then you put it in the refrigerator. I'll even put it in the freezer and it thickens up even faster, you know? Well, I guess that, that's part of, let's talk about that a little bit. It just needs to be cold to activate. Right. So you can either put it in the fridge or the freezer. I haven't found a difference. Try it either way, see what you like better. So once you get it in though, it's good for how many days? Right, in other words, you're I making mean, it fresh, which is You gotta cool. treat this just like raw seafood. Right. It's just like the reef chili. Uh -huh. The reef chili has dried up little copepods and you know, all saltwater type, you right. know, living creatures in there. Right. It's just like fish. When it gets wet and then it gets warm, it's nasty. Right. So right. this food you want to treat it like raw fish because there's there's salmon in there, there's krill in there, there's zooplankton's in sure, there, sure. all things that have a shelf life, especially once it's activated. Sure. Three days is about it. So like I said, this amount of food would probably feed the average aquarium much longer. Right, it, right. You know, it really depends on your fish. So now you'd make that, if you were a normal guy, what would you do with that? Would you freeze it? I would freeze it, exactly. Okay. I would cut it into cubes, which mm -hmm. I'll show you in a minute, one that's already done. Okay. And then, after I cut it into cubes, just spread it around and put it in the freezer. And sure. then it's good much, much longer. Sure. You know, the food really lasts about six months in a powdered form. Right. After that, it's going to start losing some of its nutritional value. Sure. It's always going to have some value. Right. Even if it sits for 20 years, there's still going to be some nutritional right. value. But it's a best if used by. And, and right. all foods need to have that expiration date. Right. Really, all foods. Well, Dog plus, food, everything. fish food, people food. Yeah, test, test kits have shelf life. Everything. Right. Right. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but Right. Six months. Right. So, really, this food, once you figure out how much you feed, like Jim did, right. you can just, then you can kind of, you know, calculate it out. Like, right. he feed it X amount of ounces in three weeks. Now he knows how much he would need over a year's time. So, every six months, he buys fish food. Sure. Done. Sure. All right. Now, let's, uh, let's break for a second, and we'll get into the next aspect of this. Okay. Everything that I do in business all has to do with customizing it. Yep. There's very little that I purchase from a manufacturer that I don't change or tweak a little bit. Right. This food is no different. So let me show the viewers how this food can be customized for you. Okay. All right. First, let's talk about we've talked about the reef chili. Okay. Yep. Yep. The reef chili is basically for corals. Small fish can eat it too. Right. If you have a reef tank, you're not just feeding fish only, mm -hmm. reef chili would be a dynamite additive. So when you feed your fish, as they break through it, particulates right. break off, and now your corals, your sponges, all the things that can eat what's in the reef chili right. can now feed on at the same time as feeding on the gel food. Right. All right, so what we're going to do, we're not going to add a ton of it. 
But what we're going to add is enough just to put a little layer over top. You know, and, and I know, like everything else, when I first started using, you know, the food, mm -hmm. um, started looking at the research and what's in there. And I mean, just straight, right, without any, any reef chill or anything else, there's already zooplankton's, krill, and all that other fun stuff. There is. So. Yeah, in the food. Yep. Yeah, we'll go over all the ingredients. You know, all the key components right, of the food. Right. All right. Another thing I love, this is a kind of an older vitamin. Mm -hmm. It's called Cellcon. I have nothing to do with Cellcon with American Reef. I just like right. the product. I might actually call them. Sure. But sure. Cellcon has things in it that I have seen myself help fish fight lateral line, right. become more immune, help to just basically, you know, immune, sure, disease sure. resistant. It has things in it that I really like and I've seen the difference using it and not using it. Right. So, shake it up. What is this called again? Cellcon. Okay, hold it there. Three. Like I said, Cellcon has nothing to do with American Reef. I just like the product and it fits with the, sure, uh, sure, the high performance diet. All right. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to add some drops of Cellcon in there. Now say your fish are on flake food. Right. Okay. Here's a ocean nutrition flake food, common food. We feed it here occasionally. Right. It can help your fish recognize that it's food when you sure. drop it in the water. Now there is things in this food, like the krill, the zooplankton that just have a smell that right. fish really can't resist. Right. But if your fish still won't eat it, put some of your existing foods in it sure. to help trigger that, you know, responsiveness to feed. Sure, sure. Wh whatever you're feeding. Even if it's a mice shrimp or a brine shrimp, sure. you can put it in the food, it's just not going to preserve very long. So right. it's got to be a small portion, small quantity. Although if it's frozen, it's going to pres preserve just as if it was in a freezer. Right? True. Okay. Yeah, if it's frozen, it's fine, obviously. I mean, you always just got to. Now, I'm not going to put a lot in, but nori. You can cut up into little pieces uh -huh. and put it in there. What I like about it is, here, watch. So you have small pieces. When it's in there, it's going to be sticky and it's going to stay in the food. Right, right. Where right. when you feed nori and they chew pieces of it off, right. it ends up in your filter bag, it ends up on your strainers. You right. know, I love nori. It's a fantastic food. However, it becomes very messy if you feed too much. Sure. So nori can be shredded up. A lot of times you have the crumbs in the bottom of the bags that the nori comes in. Right. Just dump it all in the food. Right, heck yes. Yeah. Yeah. Your tangs, your angels will love it. Right. Okay, so now what we're going to do, you saw some of the things that I did with this food. One thing I didn't mention that can also be effective mm -hmm. would be if your fish are sick. If your fish are sick, there's methods that I'm not going to go over today, we'll save for another time, that you can put a combination of medication and binders in the food to actually feed your fish medication instead of polluting your whole tank. Right. It's, right. it's a pretty complicated, it, it's simple, but it, it, it's, it's a very specific technique to be effective. You know, there's a lot of techniques out there that sound good on paper, but they don't work. So that's another thing that you can do with the high-performance diet is put antibiotics in the food so your fish eat it instead of contaminating the water with antibiotics right. or, you know, parasite, uh, sure. killing drugs, stuff sure. like that. Sure, exactly. So Plus well, they digest it, which is, a, again, it's direct as opposed to indirect. Well, I mean, there's no medication that we take other than a shot or ingesting it. You right. don't breathe in medication. Right, exactly. Very rarely. I mean, some asthma, That's maybe. Say, yeah. But for the most part, you ingest it. Yep. Animals are no different. So, and fish are no different. If they sure. ingest it, it's more effective. We'll throw this one in the freezer. Yep. We'll take one that's already done that we put in there about an hour ago out of the freezer, okay? Okay, so we're going to freeze for about an hour, or refrigerate for an hour, whatever you want. Right? That's right. And. Uh, already started to freeze but it's perfect and I'm cutting it with a little exacto knife and there's what it looks like so once you hold that there now why don't you kind of is it still flexible or is it frozen it's it's pretty it's pretty stiff it's not totally frozen it's still able to be fed 
You want to feed some fish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's head over to one of my little reef tanks and feed some of the smaller fish. And, you know, before I head over there, that piece of food right there, yeah. you cannot believe how many fish that will feed. That very small piece of food. It's the size of a quarter, right? Yes. Well, you know what? That, that That's one thing that I noticed on my tank, for example. Um, like everything, I mean, they ate chunks of it off there, right? Since it, it's, it's. I mean, it depends on the size of your fish, but if you have small reef fish, right. you know, a half a pound of this food, which when it's wet makes a pound of food, right, could feed a, re a reef tank for a year. Right. I mean, it's very, very affordable. Right. So uh, here's some little clown fish. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it here and let them pick at it. And I mean, these fish have such small stomachs. Right. But when I let it go, it's going to stay in a chunk, and they can just keep picking at it. Hermit so, crabs, different types of nasarius snails, cucumbers, sand sifting gobies, all those type things can utilize this food because it stays in one piece. So, it doesn't end up in your filter. Well, I was going to say, how long for the people who you know haven't used it, how long does it stay in that solid form? Well, it depends on how you mix it, but right. if you have a lot of reef animals in your tank, they're going to devour it. I mean, the hermit crabs and the snails are going to be all over it. So you're just going to have, everybody's population is different. So it's, it totally depends on your population and how much you feed. Yeah, like I know in my tank, for example. Here it goes, look. <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, like I said, the hermit crabs, you can see that hermit crab running to it. Right, look at him. It's booking. Right. I mean, that that's what they'll do. There's little hermit crabs hustling to that piece of food. So I like to, for the little clownfish, I just like to hold it, let them all. I know they're all going to get some. And I can keep it away from the bigger fish if there weren't bigger fish in this tank. Well, you know, I, I guess to that point, that's one of the reasons I like it, right? Meaning that it does stay solid for hours without breaking off into the tank mostly. And then the uh, dominant fish eat first, right? After they eat first, right, then the kind of weaker fish come over and they get to eat. So everybody gets to eat. Well, you know, one thing about the reef hobby is it's very artistic. So yeah. everybody has their own techniques for right. their aquarium. And you can utilize any of your techniques how you get food to your fish right. whether you feed in separate areas in the aquarium like when we did the shark behavior they use color coded poles right. to keep the fish feeding in different everybody kind of creates their own techniques right you know that's the beauty of the hobby is it's artistic right. now you know for me these little clownfish i know that they're getting fed by just holding it for a few minutes and i can see their bellies getting fatter right. like when I came over here, their stomachs were very thin. Right. We were closed for a couple of days, so they didn't get fed. I can see their stomachs filling up. Right. Right. What are you doing, bro? All right. Now, what I want to show the viewers is really what the gel food's all about, as far as consistency. It's kind of like rubbery. You know. Yeah, look at that. So that's cool. So it stays intact and lets them graze. Then, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know. Especially bigger fish, it can swallow it whole. Sure. But, you know, drops to the bottom, and they pick at it. Yeah, you know what? How about we, uh, we show... Uh, we'll See if we can feed a piece of coral, maybe? Yeah. Right. Now, we're also going to feed some of the other corals in here, like a mushroom. Just like an anemone. There's a big scalimia back here. We'll throw a piece on him. And, you know, if they don't want it, the crabs will take it, the fish will pick it out. But you can experiment with different corals, especially like bigger LPS corals. Right. Some of your different types of soft corals that have a mouth, like a big mushroom. Sure. And just see if they swell up and take it into their mouth. Brain corals. Sure. But you just have to experiment. You know, that plate coral is definitely swelling up around it. There's a scalimia over here. They have a mouth. You drop a piece right on there. Last of Musa. We'll sprinkle a little bit on that. Break it up a little bit. Let's give it a, a 
little bit and you know we'll see how they react, right? Do antics. And just experiment with it a little bit. You know, it has the reef chili in it. Sure. It has some cell phone in it. You could put rotifers or anything else in it. Sure. Okay, and just experiment. I mean, I know that the consent consensus a lot of time with reef keeping is to, you know, low nutrient. Don't keep don't feed your fish, don't feed your corals too much. But I like healthy fat things. Yeah, hell yeah. I like things that, you know, look robust. Yep. I don't like skinny fish and skinny corals. Yeah, neither do I. I just put a big protein skimmer on there. Yeah, that's so right. that's you right. can see the scalimia over here, Ross, really swelling up. Now it's either going to swell up and reject that food, or it's going to inhale that food. Sure. One or the other, but it's not going to hurt the coral. Right, right. One way or another, it's going to take care of that food. Now you can see on the plate coral. Now take a look at the plate coral. You can see it's swelling up, and its mouth is expanding, and it's going to take that piece of gel food in. The scalimia back there, I don't know if we can get it. It's at least halfway in its mouth. Can you see it under that coralia? Give me a second, I'll try. You can barely see it down inside its mouth. If you would do that once a week to that scalimia, I don't care how much calcium you put in the water, Right. There is nothing that's going to substitute it swallowing whole pieces of food as rich as this high performance diet. Forget about it. Right, right. It's going to blow it up like steroids. Now, I hate to do this, but come over and look at this scalimia now. Okay. All right, now check out that scalimia now. That's in a full feeding uh, posture right now. I mean, it's swallowing that piece of food. I mean, look at the look how look at the how much how happy that scalimia is right now. Now tomorrow, I'm sure he's going to react like he's on steroids. He's just going to be blown up with all that nutrition. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot to say for all the micro foods, but there's also a lot to say when it can swallow something whole right. and really use all the nutrition in that high performance diet to build its skeleton to to grow tissue, all the things it needs to be a healthy, happy coral. Right. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. All right, now we're, we're checking out this scalimia swallow this piece of uh, HPD, or high performance diet. Now, some of the things that are in this diet would be the vitamin that really is exclusive to this formula and that vitamin targets red pigmentation in fish. That's the number one color in fish is red pigmentation. Right, it right. enhances it, right? Right. Well, that, Even yellow and orange. Right, I mean, it's exactly. not just red. So uh, you want to get that but a boom out of your fish in color, that's what that vitamin specializes in. Right, right. Okay? And that vitamin's in other things. I'm not going to get into all the research values of it, but believe me, it's important. I just know what their antioxidants and all that sort of stuff is really the key, right? In other words, to when you know when Jim was actually explaining it to us, right? You know, the values of it. You know, I guess the other thing. Put it this is, way: I know that it's ten times more potent yep. than any other carotene or carotoid, right. which, which that is, right. than any other one. So right. it has some power, that vitamin. Right. Okay. Now, other attributes of this food would be the zooplankton in the food for sure. zooplankton eaters, krill ground up in the food, yeah. spirulina in the food. Right, so that's a good all around, it's got it's got things for your fish, for your coral. Absolutely. It covers all the daily nutritional requirements of a reef fish like we talked about right. earlier. And I don't right. use that term lightly. Right. I mean, there's a lot of requirements for a reef fish, and it has all of that in it, in one way, shape, or form. Right. The other thing that it's going to do for your fish and your animals is it's going to help 
stabilize their immune their, their immune system, their right. defense to disease. Right. It also will help in scale, skin, bone, right. teeth, eyes, all those attributes of a reef fish in their development and their growth. Right. So you don't get stunted fish. Stunted fish are not going to live very long. Right. They're not going to grow properly. They're not going to look right. All those vitamins and minerals are crucial to reef fish. Yep. Vitamin C is in there at the proper ratio. Right, and I guess it, I, I remember, again, conversations, it was more about, again, vitamin C was used for shelf life, so it lasts longer. Look at that scalimia. I know, I it's cool. you, but that, that's, yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, there's only so much I can tell you about the food. Right. You know, seeing is believing. And, you know, I wish we had the time to, to actually take a tape measure, measure the scalimia today and measure it tomorrow, right. I guarantee that scalimia is going to be pumped up tomorrow. Right. You exactly. know? Exactly. So, to your point, it means to be... All, what I'm saying is all factual, but seeing it is what really puts this to the test. So now after watching that video, you've got a pretty good understanding of why I chose HPD. 10-ish years ago, whatever that time frame was. Um, and, and so when you look at it now, I figure what I would do is I would actually take and feed it to my tang tank now. So we can kind of compare the tangs as they existed maybe 2007, 2008 time frame and, you know, uh, whatever clips that I can find in the middle. And I, I'll actually feed the tank and showing you uh, both the current and the uh, past kind of look at those fish. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, one of the things that I do different than what we have in that video is basically the nori component of it. Meaning from a nori standpoint, what I'll do is I'll take one, two, three sheets, right? And uh, depending on how big of a batch that I make to freeze, et cetera, I'll take and I will clip it up, right? And I'll, I'll mix it into like, you know, little one inch kind of squares or something like that. And I'll mix it into there, right? So for me, since I have those tanks who, again, we know that they need to graze, right? Um, uh, I've put that in the tank. So that's the only difference in this blend that I'm using today. And, uh, you know, again, rather than talk about it, let's take a look at the tank and see how the fish react to it and what they look like. So here we are in front of the tank tank. Now, before I actually feed them the food, I want to point out the fact that I'm using a Pyrex container. Right? And I actually recommend when you mix the food using a Pyrex container. Let me explain why. When it's time to actually mix the food up, you just add your water, like for me, I'll use whatever ounces, put it in the microwave for about a minute, minute and a half, add my food, mix it up, put my lid on, put it in the freezer, or excuse me, the refrigerator, and I'm good to go, right? Hour or two later, I'll take it out, I'll cut my, you know, my little squares, and then if I want to freeze it, well, again, it's a Pyrex container, so it holds up well. So you put it in the freezer, you can store it for as long as you want, take your pieces out when you need them, and then ultimately when it's, you know, all fed, You'll take, rinse it out with water, do the same thing again, and we're not throwing away kind of plastic, you know, containers, things of that nature, right? And we're using glass, we know what it's used for, and we've minimized our time greatly because, again, we can heat it in the container, mix it container, and store it in the container. So for whatever it's worth, I recommend using Pyrex. So let's take a piece now and drop it in here, and we're going to start to see some tangs coming out of the woodwork, so to speak. Now step back and let's let the video do its thing. You know, one of the things that's inter interesting, excuse me, is I have a big blue hippo tang, and he doesn't know it's been fed yet. Now you can see him coming out of the corner. There it is. You know, one of the things to point out too is again one of the reasons why I really like the food because of that kind of. It's really palatable and it stays to get together in the water, meaning that, you know, you can see it's still in a chunk now. So again, aggressive eaters, they'll do their thing, right? And, and they'll beat it up. But when they're full, you know, the non-aggressive eaters will actually come back and then they can take their fill. So everybody gets it without really needing to fight for it, per se. And obviously you can kind of see over here. Yeah, we have the shrimp looking to get in on some action, right? I fed the fish probably about two, three hours ago. So you can see, even after two and three hours, they still really like the food. Now, this is what I meant about, again, it kind of staying together. So look, the, the feeding frenzy is kind of over now. 
Right, but when you look at it, pieces are still there, right? It's still pretty much intact. And it'll stay intact for probably a good, you know, I'll, I'll say a good hour. So after seeing that video clip, I think you get a good idea of why I claim, right, that the high performance diet is one of the best things that you can feed your fish in your reef tank, right? I mean, in my particular case, look at them, you know, they're vibrant, they go after the food, their bellies are full, and heck, they've lived a long time, right? Um, you know, I mean, realistically, I don't believe if it, it, was for, if it wasn't for the HPD, I don't think that, you know, that I could have kept that tank tank successfully as I have, right? And, and again, you know, let me step back and say, we know that there are many factors, right, to keeping a successful reef tank, as well as keeping fish healthy and alive a long time. Um, you know, and some of the things we can control, some of the things we can't control. You know, we know that though a healthy food diet is one of those things that we can control, is on that list, right, for basically keeping a healthy fish live long. Um, you know, and again, when you look at that tang, it's a great example. Like I said, I don't think I could have kept the, the fish alive, right, and that many tangs in such a small tank if it wasn't for HPD, right? And there's two primary reasons, right? Uh, number one, when you look at it, you know, the HPD, obviously it has those nutritional requirements so that, you know, as they're eating and as their bellies are full, you know, Again, they, they get the vitamins, they get everything that they need. Um, but the other thing it does is, you know, it makes them not have to worry about fighting for food, right? And as such, they become less aggressive, less territorial. And as such, we can keep, you know, again, big tangs, right? The size of your hang tangs, right? Ten of them or whatever, um, you know, in a four-foot tank. So that's one thing. You know, the other thing is the economics of it. Think about it. You know, like for me, I sell the HPD in basically an eight ounce deli style container, right? It makes about a pound of food. Think about how much a pound of food costs, right? Now, like in my case, that deli style container is 15 bucks, right? Um, take any food, I don't care if it's frozen food, flake food, whatever, and, and, and try to order a pound of it, and you'll see that the economics kind of go off the charts, right? So for me, it was one of those solutions where, again, not only was it, again, cost effective, but it had all the nutritional values that I needed too. So what, what a great combination, right? Now, if you are new uh, to the Reef Tutor series, right, a new Reef Tutor subscriber, and you're asking yourself how do you order it, the process is simple, right? Uh, basically, just PayPal $20 over to AmericanReef at me.com. What I will do is I will take the email address off that PayPal email and the address, right, and I'll send you an email saying, hey, is this where you want me to ship it? Once you confirm back to me that that's where it goes, then within 24 hours, you will have it in the mail, and I'll give you an email letting you know as such, right? Uh, I ship it USPS, priority mail, two to three days, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things where I, I try to ship even less than 24 hours because, like, for me, when I buy something over, you know, the Internet, I want to know what's coming, right? I, I want to know that it's on its way quickly and not, you know, taking a week or something like that to, uh, to, get, to, my, to get to my doorstep, right? And uh, as such... I put myself in your shoes and I try to, try to make the process as simple and effective as possible. Now, again, that $20, basically it breaks down for $15 for the food, $5 for shipping. Um, you know, if you need more, you know, just send me, you know, we can talk about it. But again, I'd like, try to like, keep things simple as possible. Um, again, you've heard me say many, many times, right, please give our sponsors a chance to earn your business. Well, now as I'm producing this video, right, uh, basically uh, Black Friday is right around the corner, and we know the Premium Aquatics, Bulk Reef Supply, um, Aquarium Currents, the Sea Swirl guys, right, they're all offering some sort of 
Black Friday, you know, uh, discount, right? Uh, I know exactly for the, uh, or specifically, excuse me, for the Query Currents or the C-Swirl guys, right? Uh, they are offering some promotion. I believe it is from now actually through December at some point where for that, like that new C-Suite product that we kind of showed a few episodes back. Um, and I believe for even the, the uh, C-Swirls, right? It's uh, somewhere around 10% off, something like that. Um, go check out the website. You'll kind of see the, the information on it. Um, but again, you know, bulk your supply, same kind of thing. I'm sure you've got the email blast with all of them. But again, give them a chance to earn your business. They're good guys, you know, honest guys that I believe that we should support in this industry. And uh, as such, give them a chance to earn the business. Again, I'm Russ Kickle. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you.